is Judge Johnny Gogo of the Santa Clara Superior Court. And today we're interviewing him because he has a fascinating story of why he chose to buy a 48 starred flag and have Japanese Americans that were interned during concentration camp during World War II to sign this flag. So he's bringing more and new history to our community. So my first question to you, Johnny, is tell us a little bit about yourself. You are actually Guamanian. Yes, my, uh, both of my parents and my grandparents, as far as able to, uh, to trace them back, uh, are from the island of Guam. And as uh, uh, many folks already know, Guam is part of the United States and has been part of the United States since 1898. Um, and um, my parents, uh, again, were, were born on Guam. Uh, my father joined the military right out of high school, and uh, I was actually born in Germany. Uh, but uh, because my father was in the military, I was born at an uh, American uh, military hospital in Germany. And, and um, so I'm a U.S. citizen. I, at one time, probably could have filed for dual citizenship uh, with Germany, but uh, ultimately that was never done. Um, my younger brother was born in Germany. Actually, I have an older sister who was born on Guam. And my older brother was born in Japan, uh, again, when my father was uh, stationed out there. And I have a younger sister who was born in Kentucky. Uh, and because we were a military family, uh, like a lot of military families, we moved around every three years to a new military uh, post. And so I've grown up really around the world. And, and uh, I've grown up in Germany. Uh, I've grown up in Japan, Guam. California, Alaska, uh, Kentucky, uh, and so again, um, throughout many parts of the world. Uh, California was eventually where my father retired, and we uh, were in the Sacramento area, and so I finished my high school up in Sacramento, California, and started uh, junior college at Sacramento City College. I transferred down to Riverside City College for a year before uh, graduating from University of California, San Diego, UC San Diego, uh, with a uh, degree in political science and a minor in history. And that history uh, uh, part will come back uh, uh, to us. Uh, and then I uh, took two years off to work and just kind of take a break from school uh, before starting law school, Thomas Jefferson School of Law down in San Diego and uh, graduating and becoming a prosecutor. Um, and I started my prosecution career out on Guam so I moved back to Guam, worked there for a couple of years, uh, decided um, to come back to California, and um, no prosecutor offices were uh, willing to give me an opportunity down in Southern California. I decided to apply to the San Jose, uh, Santa Clara County DA's office in 1999, and they took a chance on me, and I uh, came up to San Jose uh, and, and uh, started my career at the DA's office here. And recently, in 2019, uh, Governor Newsom appointed me to the Santa Clara County Superior Court, and I've been a judge now, uh, handling our criminal cases here in our county uh, for the last year and a half. What an incredible story. Please explain to us a little bit of how you got so interested in the Japanese American history during World War II. Absolutely. Uh, so I've always had kind of a, 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 a genuine interest in, in history, and in particular uh, World War II history, because my parents uh, were both born on Guam, and they were both small children in 1941 when Guam was invaded by the Japanese Imperial uh, forces uh, the day after Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, Guam was captured and occupied uh, from December 10th of 1941 through July uh, 21st of 1944. And during that approximate two and a half year of occupation, uh, my parents as natives remained on the island, uh, really um, helping to, uh, they, they and their families were helping to um, uh, support the Japanese occupation uh, that was on the island at that time. And so there's always been that, that kind of history, that tie to history, uh, for me and my family uh, with respect to uh, the Japanese-American uh, uh, connection, the uh, World War II connection, uh, etc. Um, in terms of more specific uh, 
uh, interest in learning about the more about the Japanese inter American internment experience. That really started uh, more so when Judge Roberta Hayashi uh, here in San Jose became a judge uh, with our bench. And uh, Judge Hayashi joined the court's community outreach committee. And when she became part of that community, uh, I'm sorry, that committee, she started to help uh, educate our bench, our city, and our county more about the events and celebration of Fred Korematsu Day. And I was a then a DA uh, still with the Santa Clara County DA's office when I met uh, Judge Hayashi. And uh, I was also part of community outreach efforts with the DA's office. And so when I learned that she was promoting Korematsu Day events, I started to help and assist in that promotion uh, of, of, of Fred Korematsu Day. So on and so forth, I, I became more and more involved. Uh, obviously uh, met a number of folks here in our San Jose, Japantown uh, related to uh, the Fred Korematsu Day events, um, including uh, uh, famed civil rights attorney, uh, Dale Minami. Uh, Dale came out uh, to do one of the presentations here uh, in San Jose um, during Fred Korematsu Day events. Um, and I got to learn a little bit more about Dale and would run into Dale at different uh, uh, community events, uh, Asian Pacific American bar events, and slowly got to uh, build a relationship with, uh, with Dale over the years. Um, but it wasn't until I got uh, appointed to the bench and became a colleague with Judge Hayashi that I decided that, um, you know, was there more that I could do to help promote uh, Fred Korematsu Day and the lessons uh, um, that we need to, to learn from there and, and take from there so that we don't uh, repeat those same mistakes of, of removing uh, American citizens um, from, their, from their homes, from, from their jobs, from their schools, from their lives uh, without proper due process uh, and evidence. And so as I was thinking about how I might be able to help uh, um, with spreading the message and I thought about how might I be able to help uh, um, incorporate more folks from the community who, like Fred Korematsu, who actually uh, suffered through the incarceration, the uh, wrongful incarceration. And I thought to myself, um, obtaining a flag, a 48-star American flag, and taking that around our community here in San Jose uh, for signatures of, of survivors from, the, from those imprisonment camps would be, um, I think, uh, uh, my way to help uh, promote the uh, events and lessons of Fred Cormont today, and again, involve more folks from the community. And so that's what I decided to do, and um, I obtained the flag just recently, uh, this year, I think it was uh, probably uh, early February of, of, of 2021, and uh, I knew the first person that I wanted to sign the flag was going to be San Jose Congressman Mike Honda uh, because um, I, I knew uh, Mike and I knew he was very involved in the community and I knew he had done uh, fabulous things for our community when he was um, in office locally here in Santa Clara County and then when he was a uh, U.S. Congressman uh, for San Jose in the area. And so I knew a little bit about Mike Honda's story, um, and I knew that he was, uh, again, um, uh, a fantastic uh, a member of our community in terms of outreach. And so um, through the grapevine, I was able to track down um, Mike Honda's name and phone number, and I reached out to uh, uh, Congressman Honda, and I asked him uh, if he would uh, uh, be uh, you know, do me the honor of, of signing the um, American flag. And we sat and, and met uh, one Sunday afternoon. And as is typical with Mike Honda, he quizzed me about uh, the, the project. And uh, he asked me uh, a lot of uh, very probing questions. Uh, I must have answered them to his satisfaction because uh, Mike Honda was the first uh, was the first signature uh, on the flag. He wrote my name first, go, 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 and then he wrote Mike Honda, oh, 2021. Okay. And then he wrote his, um, his camp number. Uh, and I was very honored to have him be the first uh, 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 signer for the flag. 
Uh, and from, you know, from Mike Honda, I was able to reach out to Roy and Esther. Um, we were at Sony here, Roy's uh, coffee station. I reached out to um, uh, his granddaughter, Jasmine, because I, I, I knew that Jasmine and the family was running the coffee station. Jasmine, who put me in touch with her mom, Carol. Uh, and Carol flag. set up uh, the meeting at the coffee the station. The, uh, and um, justice and uh, I had seen Roy around the coffee station and an army veteran's hat. Uh, anyway, I, I kind of suspected that he might be the owner, but I never approached him. Roy and Esther were, like were some anyone? of the other uh, early signers of the you flag, next to my um, and it was such a uh, pleasure to meet uh, Roy and Esther and I was in the uh, learn a little bit about their story I'm, I'm and, too. and okay, uh, absolutely. the fact that they were still married and, and, and still, you know, we were blessed to still have them with us. And as I sat and chatted with them and listened uh, to their stories, and which which prison camps they were they were uh, relocated to. Um, I also learned about uh, you know the humor that they right, that they still please. have between <laughs> one another, and, uh, you know, the, the, the joking and the uh, the needling that they give one each, uh, each other uh, still to this day. And so that was a, a really neat uh, meeting with them. Uh, from there, again, a few more folks from San Jose signed the flag, and through again the San Jose connection. I knew that uh, Secretary Norman Mineta was also originally from San Jose and one of our uh, city um, uh, council members, one of our uh, mayors, the first Asian American mayor of a major city here in the United States. I knew that he also served a long time in Congress and obviously he served as secretary uh, with the um, Clinton administration as well as the uh, George W. Bush administration um, and obviously uh, um, very well respected um, uh, throughout the nation. And so my, my next big goal was, uh, in terms of early signatures, was to try to see if I could contact uh, Secretary Mineta and, and see if he would be interested in signing the flag and uh, if he was going to come back to San Jose. I'd, I'd wait for him in San Jose, but if he wasn't going to come back to San Jose, um, I had no problem uh, scheduling a flight to, to D.C. To, to track him down. A couple of weeks went by and, and uh, my contacts uh, had not heard, heard any response from, from uh, Secretary Mineta and, and uh, I think through uh, a stroke of luck, um, I found out, uh, I was on an email thread and found out that his son um, um, was uh, connected to our courts. And so I reached out to one of our other judges to see if she could connect me with the son and the son connected me ultimately with the father, Secretary Mineta, and uh, the son, uh, David, helped me arrange uh, a time to, to actually uh, meet with Secretary Mineta uh, at his home on the East Coast. So I booked a flight to DC and flew out to DC, took some vacation time, and um, met with Secretary Mineta. And you know I wanted to be respectful of his time, and so I, I really only, in my mind, set uh, maybe maybe an hour tops uh, to meet with him, and, and chat with him, and um, as I met with him and, and we started to talk, he uh, shared uh, some of his history, and he's got a deep history, um, and obviously I was fascinated uh, with that uh, history as a as a student of history and a student of politics and a student of law and justice uh, and. Um, I just let him continue to talk and I just continued to ask open-ended questions and uh, before you knew it, uh, that one hour turned into about a three-hour uh, uh, meeting with Secretary Mineta and, and thankfully we had a beautiful gorgeous day back east and we sat outside underneath uh, uh, an umbrella on his patio and and uh, really just had, to, I had a really wonderful conversation with him and, and I was honored uh, to have Secretary Norman Mineta uh, sign the flag. And um, as he signed the flag, um, not only did he write his name on the flag, uh, but he decided to also write uh, the words non-alien. And uh, as I asked him about uh, why he wrote non-alien, uh, he told me the story of, of him being at, at uh, the prison camp at Heart Mountain, and he had an older brother 
Um, um, and the older brother um, told Norm, uh, Secretary Mineta, that uh, Secretary Mineta's designation was non-alien. And uh, that upset uh, Secretary Mineta, even though he was a young child still at that time. And he said, I'm not a non-alien. I'm a U.S. citizen. And um, that was the story that uh, Secretary Mineta shared with me in terms of why he, why he decided to write non-alien um, underneath his name. Uh, he shared, uh, like I said, many different stories with me, fascinating stories. Um, I had him sign, uh, again, not just the flag, but I also brought a book out for Secretary Mineta to sign for me. It was a book uh, specifically about uh, high school students at Heart Mountain uh, High School. Uh, the book is a new book. Uh, the title is The Eagles of Heart Mountain, uh, a true story about football, um, incarceration, um, and resilience during America uh, or World War II America. And it really was uh, a story, a football story, at its heart about high school students um, at the Heart Mountain camp who formed a, a Japanese uh, American football team on the, um, uh, at Heart Mountain. And they were able to challenge um, other schools outside of that prison camp, so local school high schools in Wyoming. And this brand new football team of Heart Mountain ended up dominating the football, high, local high school football scene uh, in Wyoming at that time, uh, really just uh, uh, outscoring and outplaying uh, many of the, uh, uh, the best uh, teams at that time. And it, and it got to the point where uh, the Heart Mountain Eagles football team uh, developed a reputation uh, that they were uh, undefeated and in, 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 uh, performing so well that some of the better teams um, decided that they didn't want to play. Um, the Heart Mountain Eagles football team. Now, um, uh, you know, they can say that they decided to not to play them for many reasons, probably which included race. Um, but the fact of the matter is, uh, uh, the Heart Mountain Eagle football team there in that time frame uh, asked uh, to challenge anybody to take on all comers, and, and uh, they beat uh, uh, the vast majority of those teams. And so that football book. Um, is what drew me, that football story is what drew me to that book in the first place. And then as, as uh, the master author Brad Pearson uh, uh, did, he weaved in the stories of, of uh, race and, uh, and uh, intolerance and um, the wrongful uh, incarceration of the Japanese American citizens uh, without due process of law and the resilience of the Japanese American uh, uh, folks, uh, you know, the grandparents, the parents, the, the young students, the, the babies, the resilience uh, that they had with them, within them to continue to, to try and, uh, despite these, these trying and, and horrible circumstances of having to be removed, forcibly removed and, and uh, be put behind bar barbed wire and uh, less than ideal living conditions, um, the, the parents, um, of the younger children um, obviously made it uh, an emphasis to try and continue uh, life uh, as, as much as or as close to normal for the for their students and their, for the young children as possible and so they had many activities uh, for for the uh, for the younger students including Boy Scouts uh, activities which is uh, what um, uh, Secretary Mineta got involved in uh, the Boy Scout uh, activity at Heart Mountain and um, uh, as many people know, it was through his Boy Scout involvement that uh, Secretary Mineta met an, uh, a Boy Scout from outside the camps by the name of uh, uh, Alan Simpson, who later became uh, a very uh, well-known, respected uh, senator from the state of Wyoming. And so the political career of Norm, uh, Secretary Mineta paralleled the political career of Senator uh, Simpson, and the two of them um, uh, from different sides of the uh, of the aisle, if uh, uh, if you will, uh, Norm Secretary Normanetta being a Democrat and Secretary Alan Simpson being a Republican, uh, they got together to work on uh, bipartisan legislation and led the way for a lot of uh, a lot of bipartisan efforts back in D.C. during their time. But you know, amongst the other activities for the students was organized sports, basketball, baseball, and football. And so again, that story that story of that undefeated football team drew me to that book. Uh, even though um, 
Secretary Mineta wasn't specifically mentioned in the book, the book did mention the Boy Scouts uh, involvement in, uh, in the story. And so I had Secretary Mineta sign the book where it mentioned the Boy Scouts. And, and so he honored me uh, by doing that as well. And then, uh, to be honest, once I um, had the signatures of, uh, of San Jose, Congressman Mike Honda, and uh, Secretary Norman Mineta, and, and, and a lot of other uh, leaders here in San Jose, that kind of gave the flag in this project, you know, credibility within the Japanese American community throughout the United States. And um, with that uh, credibility, I reached out uh, to my colleagues down in Los Angeles on the Superior Court bench, um, my Japanese American uh, uh, colleagues uh, that are judges, and um, uh, Judge uh, Holly uh, Fujie uh, in particular, who is uh, the leader of our California Asian Pacific American Judges Association. Um, she's been a longtime leader uh, in, uh, in Los Angeles. She reached out to other colleagues on the bench and other judges and, and judicial officers in Los Angeles reached out to me and I um, partnered up with uh, Commissioner, uh, uh, Los Angeles Superior Court Commissioner Evan uh, Kitihara, uh, who told me that both of his parents were still alive. And we partnered up and we set a date down in Los Angeles uh, at the Japanese Institute of Sautel. Uh, we borrowed their parking lot one Sunday afternoon and set up some tables, uh, brought some pens and some hand sanitizer, and uh, we had a good turnout uh, in Los Angeles that day. Approximately 25, 30 people came out to sign the flag, uh, including a couple of, again, uh, folks who uh, were out uh, from Heart Mountain, and I had them uh, sign the flag as well, and uh, two, two folks in particular, uh, Bacon Sakatani, uh, and George Iseri, uh, who live in Los Angeles, but were, again, uh, ch smaller children around the same time as uh, Secretary Mineta um, at Heart Mountain. And both George uh, and Bacon came out to sign the flag with their Heart Mountain uh, polo shirts on uh, and their ball caps that uh, indicated they were also uh, U.S. Uh, military veterans, both uh, George and Bacon having served in the Korean War. And so it was, uh, you know, again, an honor for all of the folks in Los Angeles to sign the flag, but uh, in particular, Bacon and George, because of their their ties to the book, their ties to, to Heart Mountain, and their service uh, uh, to our, our country as uh, 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 U.S. Army um, uh, veterans. Um, from Los Angeles, um, uh, Carol from uh, Roy's Coffee Station and I continued to stay in touch, and uh, Carol... Uh, suggested uh, that uh, we uh, advertise to the local community that the flag would be available for signatures at uh, Roy's Coffee Station over the weekend of Mother's Day weekend, May 8th and May 9th, uh, uh, just uh, passed us by a couple weeks ago. And so um, we had the flag brought over to uh, Carol, and over that weekend, uh, Carol uh, and her daughter and her family helped advertise the, the flag signing opportunity. And it kind of blew up, if you will, from there. Uh, over that weekend, uh, Carol uh, shared with me that approximately uh, 70 to 80 folks came to sign the flag over the weekend. And she took a few pictures. And I think, Jeannie, that's when uh, you came to, to see some of those folks uh, signing the flag. and. Uh, maybe talking to or interviewing some of those folks. And I was out of town that weekend visiting my mother uh, uh, in Sacramento for Mother's Day, but um, uh, Carol shared uh, some uh, text messages and some photographs with me, and I was blown away by the, by the response uh, and turnout and uh, just the, the, the heartfelt messages that were coming uh, from uh, Carol, um, uh, from the... Um, from the other folks that signed the flag. Similar messages that, um, that it received down in Los Angeles uh, in terms of folks uh, uh, being very thankful and grateful for signing the flag. Um, and then from, from there, I ultimately took the flag up to Seattle uh, this past weekend, um, uh, May uh, 21st and 22nd. 
uh, partnered with um, uh, with the gentleman uh, who's the president of the uh, Seattle chapter of the JECL, Stan. Uh, Stan uh, helped uh, coordinate a, a time frame with for me at the uh, Nisei Veterans Hall uh, in downtown Seattle, and uh, we were able to use their parking lot to, again to help uh, promote the social distancing and, and the COVID uh, 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 situation. And uh, so we had a, a table set up in the parking lot. They had a nice little tent to provide us some shelter from the sun. And uh, another fabulous turnout uh, from the folks up in Seattle. Again, about uh, 30 people signed the flag. And, um, you know, I listened to, to some of the stories uh, from those uh, uh, family members and realized that, um, that a lot of the family members living up in the Seattle Northwest area when they were uh, relocated and forcibly removed, um, a, lot of, a lot of them were, were sent to the Minidoka uh, prison camp area. And um, one of the family members um, brought a book about the, the Minidoka experience that uh, I was able to uh, take with me back from Seattle. And so, um, again, a fabulous turnout in Seattle and folks, again, sharing their heartfelt uh, uh, gratitude uh, towards the opportunity and the meaning uh, behind the flag. And um, right before I, I, I left Seattle, um, one of the other gentlemen of the Japanese American community up there uh, put me in contact with two World War II veterans, uh, Japanese Americans uh, that had served uh, despite initially being put in the Thule Lake camp with their families, uh, Thule Lake and Heart Mountain uh, with their families, because these two gentlemen uh, were draft uh, age eligible uh, for the United States Army during World War II, um, that's as we know from history, that's what the United States government did. They drafted um, Japanese American teenagers uh, into the World War II effort uh, saying that those Japanese American citizens and, and teenagers were loyal enough to serve in the U.S. military, yet their families had to remain back in the uh, in the uh, imprisonment uh, in the uh, in the incarceration camps. So, again, the the hypocrisy uh, of that situation um, uh, obviously rings very loud and, and clear um, when you just read about that. But to have uh, those two World War II veterans. Uh, um, Kimitomo uh, Miramoto, who served in the uh, 442 uh, Army um, uh, Company, and uh, Shigeto uh, Otani, uh, he goes by Shig, who served in the 522 Artillery uh, Unit of uh, World War II. Uh, to have those two gentlemen uh, also sign the flag. Um, uh, it was almost like uh, the icing on top of the cake because it was already a successful event up in Seattle and to have these two World War II veterans sign the flag and to meet them and talk with them and take pictures with them. Again, this flag signing opportunity has been um, beyond my imagination. And as I tell uh, these uh, individuals who do sign the flag these days, while I may have come up with the idea in, of this 48 uh, star American flag and purchased the flag uh, for signatures. Um, it's no longer my flag. Uh, the flag now belongs to all of these folks that have signed the flag. And it now belongs to the Japanese American community. I'm just the caretaker uh, until um, I travel uh, to a few more locations um, um, I'm going to travel back down to Los Angeles this weekend for some folks that I missed. Uh, I'm going to travel to Sacramento the first weekend of June uh, to partner with the Sacramento Florin JACL uh, in coordination with their Go for Broke uh, ceremony for the U.S. Postal Stamp that's coming out. Um, I know that there are more uh, 442 veterans out in Hawaii, and so I'm going to try to contact the, those veterans that are still alive with us in Hawaii and try to make, make a trip out there as soon as possible because um, uh, every day that we have with these, with these veterans and survivors of, of the, of the uh, prison camps, every day is a blessing, absolutely. Uh, but as we know, 
the, the uh, World War II veterans are now in their mid to late 90s and nobody's guaranteed tomorrow. And so um, the, the incentive and kind of pressure on me now is to try and make contact with the uh, 442 or the, or the 5, 5, 522 or the 100th uh, uh, um, World War II veterans um, uh, in Hawaii and, and to try to get out there sooner rather than later so that they can have an opportunity to sign the flag and, and we can help uh, further honor their memory um, and, and their legacy uh, with this uh, flag signing opportunity.